This is the Faith, Family, and Fundamentals with Fran podcast. Hey, family. Welcome to Faith, Family, and Fundamentals with Fran. I am pleased and especially blessed to have you listening today. I expected you, so I studied God's Word to prepare a few positive words of encouragement. I want to impress upon you the dire need to begin living in expectation. I know we constantly say God said and God's word said and we proceed to quote scripture after scripture after scripture. But today, today I want you to put into practice really living in expectation. Yes, live your life in and with great expectations because God wants us to cast all of our cares on him because he cares for us. So we have got to expect our great big God to handle every problem, each issue and struggle, preparing our minds and our faith in God to work for us. Furthermore, we do not get what we want. We get what we prepare for. So as we expect God's goodness, rich blessings and unmerited favor, prepare for it. God has promised that your expectation shall not be cut off because the desire of the righteous shall be granted. In Proverbs 10 and 24, but the desire of the righteous shall be granted. The man at the gate called beautiful, blind Bartimaeus, expected that Jesus would restore his sight. The woman with the issue of blood had faith that if she could just touch the hem of his garment, she would be made whole. The young ruler expected that if he could get Jesus to come and pray for his daughter, everything would be all right. Hannah kept on expecting her son if she could just get the blessing of the priest. So she went to the sanctuary and prayed fervently with expectation. She expected that her son, Samuel, would be granted her by God. So she pledged even before he was born that she would give him back to God. After 40 weeks of gestation, a woman expects her precious bundle of joy. After working 40 plus hours per week, we all expect a paycheck. After driving all night long, we expect to reach our destination. According to Psalm 34 and 8, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man or woman that trusts in him. You see, to hold an expectation, one must have faith and hope that the expected is coming into fruition. So then our expectation must be based on our faith and trust we have in the Lord. Proverbs 23 and 18, For surely there is an end, and thine expectation shall not be cut off. Of course, this verse is solidifying a promise that if we trust in the Lord wholeheartedly, then we must stand fast with great expectation. Because an end is surely coming, but God's word, his will, and his promises will be made manifest. If God said it, he will surely do it. If you and I put our trust in the car brakes made by a mortal man, why do we doubt an omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent God? Just Saturday evening, the day before Resurrection Sunday. I must have been driving full speed down Camp Creek Parkway, finishing up my errands, and my mind was fixed on my next stop. You know, I had carved out a schedule, and I expected to reach my destination by a certain time. As I pressed my gas pedal, I could feel the car picking up speed. 
Then all of a sudden, I could feel my vehicle slowing, even challenging the gas I was giving as if it was trying to stop. God, what is going on? I asked. There should not be anything wrong with my car. My heart started beating fast. Adrenaline was pumping louder and louder with every heartbeat. Then I saw it. There was a car stopped in my lane that I could not see, at least not until I got too close to stop, especially at the speed I was going. My heart was drumming so loudly that I could hear it throughout the car. But God, I need you to know because I trust him and he knew the stopped car would be in my lane. And he knew that I would not have seen that stopped car in time. He put the brakes on my car. And just before impact, he pulled my car into the next lane where I could safely maneuver again. Of course, I became emotional, thanking and praising God for his protection in the midst of what we call unseen danger. But an omniscient God knows all things. The impact could have been catastrophic because I was driving so fast. But God, my God in his infinite wisdom, took care of me. Now I want you to understand my mother, the beautiful matriarch of my family, taught us well. She displayed, encouraged, and instilled such great faith that I can truly say I expected God to take care of me. And I still believe that such expectation is what we call blind faith. When I cannot see my way clearly or I see no way for things to work out, I expect God to show up and show out. I expect him to work in my favor and for my good. As his word says, all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. I want to impress upon you today that we must, we have got to start living our lives with expectation. As God's people, we must expect the unexpected. Yes, it sounds clichéic even a little crazy, but the enemy is running wild. God's word said he's running to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. He is cunning, sneaky, and will take advantage of or liberty with any area of weakness. This especially applies to our faith. You see, when you have faith, in God and you live your life believing that God is going to remedy every matter in each and every area of your life. You live with and in expectations. We who are named the name of Christ ought to expect him. As we hold expectations, we understand very well that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy As we study God's word, we should expect his grace, mercy, and favor along with God's will and his way. We must also become familiar with the enemy's moves, his vices, and his practices every day. So we should be more wise with each of his vicious attacks. I expect that just when I believe things are going well, the enemy will show up. I ought to expect that he will throw stumbling blocks in my way and weave problems, misunderstandings, and issues between me and others, oftentimes even between me and the ones I love the most. I expect that if we defeat the enemy today, he will be back tomorrow, maybe even this evening. If we closed the door and kept him out on one occasion, He will be at a window waiting for someone to open it. I expect that he will continue to defile the air we breathe. As he is the prince of the air, 
So be careful that you keep praying and expecting God to equip you to stand against the wiles of the devil. My expectation causes me to move about being sure to keep on the whole armor of God as the enemy has been identified as one who constantly arrives with plots, plans, and assignments to disrupt, deceive, and defile. And just as God knows all that I enjoy and love, the enemy has identified that which is near and dear to my heart as well. On the other hand, I expect that when God wakes me up each morning, His brand new mercies are available to me. A brand new chance touches me and I praise God for it. I expect that when I put him first, his word said, seek me early in the morning so that he stands tall and fights my every battle, every hour, minute and second of every day. I expect that he walks with me and he talks with me and he promised never to leave nor forsake me. So I expect that with everything I go through, in whatever state or condition I find myself, therein I will be content because I expect that God will be with me. You see, God is with me and he's with you. I expect that when the enemy comes in like a flood, and he will, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. I expect the Holy Ghost, God's precious comforter that walks with us and dwells within us is faithful to do all that God has promised. I expect that even when I would go wrong, when I would speak or respond unkindly, the Spirit of the Lord will convict me and I will have to apologize for the human side of me as I am a spiritual being enduring human experiences. I expect that because Christ died for my sins, sin has no more dominion over me, but my weak human flesh causes me to need the Lord and his spirit to keep my flesh under control every day and every hour. I expect a blessed savior has paid it all so that I can live free from sin in this present world. I must expect that many will not understand my reason for believing, trusting, and leaning on an invisible God that loves me unconditionally. But if I am willing to drive a man-made car at 80 miles per hour and greater than 80 miles per hour, and when I hit the man-made brakes... I expect my vehicle to obey and come to a stop as I command. Then I trust in an omniscient God to see me through all my struggles as he created me and everything, every living thing that was ever created. You see, his eye is on the sparrow. He provides for every creature seamlessly. And unlike me, they were not made in his image or likeness. However, you and I were made in his image and given dominion over all these creatures. So I expect that he will take care of me. I expect that he will take care of you. I can feel the intangible God. I see the invisible, and I know that my Savior lives. He lives deep down in my heart and soul, and he is the only external factor that exists internally and eternally within. You see, he covers me from the inside out, fixing my broken heart and regulating my troubled mind so that my physical being behave appropriately and my soul is strengthened by the fruit of the spirit. He knows my heart, my mind, and my every thought even before I can think them. He also knows all that I am up against, yet he promised never to leave nor forsake me. He knows that I am flawed. At times my flesh is weak, but the joy of the Lord is my strength. He said that my righteousness 
is as filthy rags. So I cannot do enough good to move God because he made up his mind a long, long time ago that he loves us and he will take care of us. Yes, he gave his only begotten son to die for my sins and the sins of this world just so that we could have eternal life. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Then he did not stop there, but he said, I know the plans I have for you, plans to give you hope and a future, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. He said, I know the thoughts I think toward you, thoughts of good and not of evil, thoughts to give you an expected end. You see, in my 54 years and eight months of life, I have learned to live my life with expectancy because I know from where he has brought me and I speak from personal experience. God is a God of action. He will come through for you. Years ago, I would worry and stress when I could not see how things would work out. You know, I always wanted to know how things would come together. I wanted to see the inner workings from A to Z. But as time and the years and experience taught me, I realized that God is in control. And no matter how it all looks, things will work out for our good. I learned that the how is neither my business nor my concern. My only concern is that I expect God to work it all out. And he always has. Just as he told the woman with the issue of blood, woman, your faith has made you whole. I want to hear the same. You see, faith is the mother of expectation. Once you truly believe Expectation is born. I want you to gain now faith, new faith, and trust God unconditionally. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I want you to gain that new faith and trust God unconditionally, especially during the perilous times in which we live the difficulties with which we coexist. It seems people have become cold and uncaring. Concern for fellow men, women, and even the human race has become non-existent. We want to all be about what we can get for ourselves, and we look the other way if a matter does not appear to have any benefits for us. But please remember, while so many believe in every man for himself, God is still for us all. According to 2 Peter 3rd chapter and the ninth verse, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. After learning in God's word that the love of many would wax cold and men would be lovers of themselves, I expect the selfishness and lack of love for one's fellow man. However, I wait with expectation for God to show himself. You see, we were also taught that Jesus is soon to come so that he can take his children out of this sin-sick world. Until then, I expect that God will take care of us. Expect God to show up and work out every matter that is trying to overtake you, your family, and your life. Live with expectation of God's assistance, His grace, mercy, and favor. Expect God to move mountains, rivers, and people for you. Expect Him to never leave nor forsake you because he promised so expect him I urge you expect God's blessings each and every day he knows the plans he has for us 
to bless in every way. No battle too heavy, no matter too hard. Our God will see you through. He will straighten the mess you may have made and make it work for you. Expect that God will hold you up when others do not understand. He will turn those things meant for evil to a positive in his plan. Expect that God will keep and heal you against so many odds. I expect he will stand and protect me. For him, no battles too hard. While others laugh and talk about you, some even so-called friends, he will pick you up, turn your life around, your broken heart he'll mend. He will fix the issues that rise against you. Just know our God is able. And in the presence of your enemies, he promised to set you a table. Expect like David who waited patiently for the Lord to see him through. He inclined unto David and heard his cry. God can do the same for you. Live praying for our Savior. He'll deliver, save, and set free. If he's done it for so many others, he can do it for you and me. Expect the unexpected with God, whom none can figure out. A way maker and mastermind shaper, teach what love and understanding's about. No, you need not be perfect or have your ducks in a row. Take his yoke upon you and learn of him so faith and trust can grow. Expect our God to always come through, be kind and always meek. His strength is made perfect in our fails and flaws, strong where we are weak. Live your life expecting God to always be right on time. He will restore all that was stolen or lost and give you peace of mind. Expect Jehovah Jireh to provide for you when you cannot find a way. All that you need is in the Lord, so expect the unexpected today. Be certain to expect God will answer your prayers and heart desire. To live in expectation, speak life out loud. Allow God to uplift, encourage, and inspire. Well, family, this is number 103 of Faith, Family, and Fundamentals with Fran. I just want you to expect all the many blessings that God has already promised. You see, your expectations place you in a posture of faith and trust in God. While I pray that you had an awesome Resurrection Sunday, please do not lose sight of its significance. Christ has defeated death, hell, and the grave so that you and I could be free. Now that I understand who I am and whose I am, I expect that God will take care of us. God did not sacrifice his only son for us, his own children, to lose hope. No, it is his desire that each of us live in great expectation of an almighty God being with us, on our side, and working in our favor. When you expect something, you prepare your heart and mind for it. You speak positively in favor of your expectation. Expectation itself set the stage for manifestation. When I expect it, I speak positively. Then I prepare my heart, soul, and mind for it. After all, we do not get what we want, but what we prepare for. So our expectations feed our preparation, which facilitates manifestation. My prayer for each of you is that you live your life out loud in expectation of God's love, grace, mercy, and divine favor every day. Because he has already proven his undying love for each of us. God bless you. Please don't forget to say something on my Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter page. You can listen to me on Amazon Music or YouTube as well. 
I welcome your questions, comments, critiques, and suggestions on topics you'd like to explore. Who knows? You might just end up being a guest on an upcoming broadcast. Remember, I'm just a regular girl navigating this diverse world. I'm looking forward to each of you. Until then, take care of yourself, each other, and stay blessed. The Faith, Family, and Fundamentals with Fran podcast is a production of the Castropolis Podcast Network. Log on to castropolis.net.